Washington Bullets, number 41, Wes Unsell. Nothing that Wes achieved surprised me. Here is a guy who wasn't blessed with all the physical gifts that some of the big centers have in basketball, but he probably achieved as much uh, outside of a, a Wilt and a Kareem um, in that era than anybody. Unsell with the rebound. Clears it up to Danby. Wes Unsell. In 1988, Wes received the ultimate honor as he was enshrined in the Basketball Hall of Fame. You know, people always ask me, say, how tough it was to play against Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain. But they didn't really understand that when you played against Wes Unsell, that he abused your body. <laughs> First of all, Willis, thank you very much. And you know, you're going to have to pay for that big tale you just told about abusing people's bodies. 6'7", 245 pounds, and solid as a rock, Unsell made his presence felt around the NBA throughout the 70s. Unsell offensive rebound. His size, he was thick. He was a man, a man's man. And so when you see him make a move, or you see him uh, making defensive moves on you, 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 you just, he controlled you. And he took control of the Bullets, leading them to the NBA Finals four times during the decade. Unsell's last appearance came in 1979, when Washington met Seattle for the second year in a row, only to lose four games to one. One year earlier, Unsell and the Bullets had simply refused to be denied. DJ around the top of the horn, shoots to the right side, there's his baseline jumper. Off the back of the rim. Unsell rebound back up. No, Wes would be the probably the only guy I know that would get a rebound, okay, under the basket and throw a chest pass to run to the floor for somebody to score on the other hand. Wes was just a competitor. That season of 1978 was the pinnacle of Unsell's career as he led the underdog bullets on a remarkable playoff run. Brown is down low, trying to get open. They give it to Dennis Johnson. He'll spin the left side to the corner. Long jumper off the back of the rim. Unsell, the long rebound. Shovels to Dandridge. Warm up the fat lady. Warm up the fat lady. The bullets are going Washington prevailed over Seattle in seven games. And Wes Unsell was named MVP of the final. For the first time in 36 years, Washington, D.C. has a major sports world. Unsell the rebound, looking down court. He's a bigger version, in some respects, of, of Charles Barkley. For him to accomplish what he accomplished with the physical talents and skills that he had, he wasn't exceptionally quick. He wasn't a great leaper. He didn't have great size. And got as much out of what he had, talent-wise, as any player who's ever played the game. In 1975, Unsell led the league in rebounding, but the heavily favored Bullets fell to Barry and the Golden State Warriors in a four-game sweep one of the NBA's most stunning upsets. Still, Wes had established himself as a team's anchor in the middle. He was the rock, he was the leader of our team. He was not afraid to bang. You saw him as a, a warrior and a leader, and you saw him banging guys, you know, six, seven inches taller than him, um, never giving up, and it, it, was, it was an inspiration to, to play alongside of him. 1971. Unsell the Bullets defeat their arch nemesis, the New York Knicks, in seven games in the Eastern Conference Finals. For his size, he was one of the best who I think ever played the game for turning in the air and releasing the ball for the get a fast break starter. He was one of the best I've ever seen in my life in doing that. Even though he was heavy and big and strong, he had a unique ability to do that. In the finals, Baltimore collided with the Milwaukee Bucks, who swept them in four straight games. But colliding with Wes Unseld wasn't too much fun either. Oh, look at that pick, and Dudley is down. Hold on. To run into a pick that Wes set was like uh, running into a, a brick wall. I mean, you, whoever it was, bounced off of it. Get the pick high from Unseld. And he used to always talk about it prior to the game. 
yell out when Wes Unsell is in the area because he had this thing where uh, he would set a pick for a guard, and I mean, it would be a bone crushing thing. So whenever guards got into the area, you would hear us say, you know, the wall, the wall, or uh, uh, where's a uh, uh, pick coming, or, you know, something to kind of let guys know that there was danger ahead. In 1968, the Bullets made Unsell the second pick in the NBA draft. An All-American at Louisville, he was an instant success in the NBA. Wes was named Rookie of the Year and Most Valuable Player, joining Will Chamberlain as the only players ever to win both awards in the same season. You know, Wes was another one of them uh, centers that understood the game. You know, where he'll get you, you know, 10 rebounds, 15, uh, you know, points or 15 points, 10 rebounds. He understood the game. In that rookie season, Wes led Baltimore from last place to first in the Eastern Division. It was a 21-game improvement and marked the Bullets' first winning season ever. For the first time, I think, in Bullets' franchise history, it said, guys, we are winning. Thirteen seasons and five All-Star appearances later, Unseld retired. He had built a reputation for doing the blue-collar work that is essential to winning. The things I did, I felt like had to be done. I learned that over the years of playing that somebody had to do this. I tried to do the job, and I didn't care really how I got it done as long as it got done. Wes Unseld certainly.